Yay Networks. Hi there, I'm Mia Sanchez, and you may recognize me as Miss USA and first runner-up at Miss Universe. Well, there is so much more to me than the sash, the crown, the dresses, the chicken cutlets, and the butt glue. Yep, that's a real thing, and we'll get into that later. I am a fourth degree black belt, a women's self-defense instructor, a mother, and a wife to my amazing co-host, Daniel Bucco. We are keeping it real as we dig into relationships, parenting, confidence, self-defense, travel, all the joys and struggles that come with living this beautiful thing we call life. So pull up a chair and throw your hair in a messy bun as we chat with all types of life experts. So make sure to like, follow, subscribe, and look out for Hold My Crown wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Hi guys, welcome back to the Hold My Crown podcast. We are here today with the amazing Katie Dickens. Did I say it right? Dickens? Yes, yes. Oh, welcome. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited for today. Thank you. Me too. Today is going to be a transformative podcast episode. I'm so excited for every single woman or man that might be supporting their partner that's listening today to be able mm -hmm. to just pick up some really great takeaways and tips that can help improve their life, especially in postpartum. It's such a beautiful season, but can be a hard season. I would love to do a little intro for you first. Can I do that? And then we'll get into it. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. So Katie Dickens is a pre and postnatal certified coach who works one-on-one -on -one with mamas around the country with a focus on rebuilding the mind and body postpartum. I have a note on that. We're going to come back to that in just a minute. For the Moms, uh, she's the founder of For the Moms, which is a movement transforming LA, creating spaces for moms to come in person and get complete mind and body reset with top services and wellness brands. It's incredible. I've been to one. I love them. Mm -hmm. For the Moms has already partnered with over 100 top wellness brands in under one year. Lastly, she just launched her online community to reach mamas throughout the country to come into a space and redefine what online community really is with one-on-one -on -one exclusive interviews, giveaways, gifting, and so much more. Welcome, Katie. Oh Yay. my goodness. Okay. I, I already said that I have like a thing, a moment I want to go back to in your mm. intro. So I was even speaking today with my hairstylist and we were talking about um, her thesis statement, graduating from the university mm -hmm. she went to and it was all about postpartum and she was telling me how she was so frustrated when studying the postpartum period that there were no programs that both connected body and mind nothing she looked everywhere and i heard you say just a few days ago that that was your struggle in your own postpartum experience so you became the expert and you created the program. So can you tell me a little bit about your personal story and how you got to be where you're at? And then I have a lot of wonderful questions that will help people have wonderful takeaways that they can apply after listening today. Yes, thank you. And I'm just so excited for this space because even coming together right now, we're already filling a gap that mm -hmm. moms, anyone is going to come into this space and be able to hear a conversation that they thought they were alone in. And so just in general, creating this space, you bringing me on, thank you so much because I am so passionate about this. So to take us back a little bit, I have always been into wellness, but when I got pregnant, I just assumed I was going to have a you know regular pregnancy. I was going to stay active. And very early on, I had complications with my pregnancy that led into my entire pregnancy. And so because of that, it left me with a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear, but in a way that I've never experienced before. I understood that the mind is powerful, but I never was in such a low place to understand that power can come from anxiety and fear too. Mm -hmm. And it's very, um, it, it overtakes your entire life. I didn't want to leave the home. I didn't want to talk some days because I just wanted to conserve the energy and just have this pregnancy and just hope that she was going to be okay. And so because of that, I right before I gave birth and I was kind of reflecting and looking around, I was literally looking around the home and I said, I'm bringing so much negativity into this space. Mm -hmm. I have dealt with a very hard pregnancy, which was hard in itself. But what I brought into this space was so much anxiety that it not only anxiety within me, but all of a sudden it rippled to everything that I was doing made me anxious. And so I said, something needs to change. I'm bringing a baby into this world. I want her to be able to feel so safe at home and so loved. And 
uh, see the joy in my eyes and understand that she could love this world through looking at me and learn how to regulate her emotions, all the things I'm thinking about. And so I started researching and saying, okay, where, where is that program out there that's going to rebuild my mind just as much as my body? And I couldn't find anything. And instead of, you know, just kind of giving up, I had such this fire in me that I said, this needs to be done. This is serious and I need to do this for myself first. And so I spent hundreds of hours kind of becoming this expert through the season of postpartum. I was able to prepare my mind before birth. And so it, it's prepare, I had to prepare too mentally to say, I'm about to go into this season and take this very seriously. And once I was in it, I realized there's no real routine when you become a mom at first, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you're just, so you're true. just every day you wake up, what, what is this day going to look like? And so I realized I can't just have a plan like I would before a baby. This has to be very specific to a new mom, the hormone changes, your pelvic floor strengthening. Um, I got pre and postnatal certified to understand the pelvic floor and to rebuild my body. But something happened in my mind that was really transformative, which kind of catapulted into who I am today with what I'm doing, which is the power that our mind can have when we're intentional. And that consistency doesn't mean we spend hours a day doing something to feel good. Consistency means we could do a couple minutes a day, pause and celebrate it, retrain our mind that this moment felt really good so that when we show up tomorrow, we remember the good moments. Mm -hmm. What happens is when we don't celebrate these good moments, we could, it could get masked with all the negativity of the day. And then the next day, we don't remember that good moment because we're already into the negativity again. Mm -hmm. um, I love that we have 60,000 thoughts a day. And Stanford study came out that said 90% of those thoughts are repetitive. And not only that, but most of them are negative. And that's not talking about a postpartum mom. That's just talking about general numbers. So can you even imagine what it would look like for a postpartum mom with those numbers. Yeah. And so it's pretty, it's pretty powerful what goes on in our mind. And so I really started to realize what does that mean to pause our day and celebrate it and slowly implement these routines. So mm -hmm. that's a little bit about just kind of how I came about having this fire to fill the gap myself. And then with the success I saw within that first year postpartum, I very quickly turned around and said, moms need this. This isn't just for me this is so serious. And so then I am able to work with moms all throughout the country and it's absolutely incredible. That's so incredible. Thank you for sharing your story and how you got to where you're at. And I feel like so many women can relate to what you're sharing. And I feel like this episode is not only for women that are experiencing postpartum, but like I mentioned before, their partners to learn how they can support them and even yes. their friends. Like maybe you don't have a partner, maybe you're a single mom, but or you know someone that's a single mom and you can learn how to step in and also help them and encourage them in the right ways. So my first question for you is, if I was your client and I was maybe two months postpartum and I'm feeling all of these like hormones and emotions, which is what I was experiencing postpartum with the girls, with Asher, wonderful postpartum time. And with the girls, it was just such a roller coaster, and I had so many sad days, but I wanted to take care of my body and I really, even though it's my second time having children, felt like I didn't know how because of the emotions. Like it was just kind of like clouding everything. So if I was a client two months postpartum, what would be like the first thing that you would tell me to do to start making a small improvement? So I think what's really important to realize is that I think when people go into this space and they have this moment, they have this, when you become a new mom and all of a sudden you're like, okay, I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready to take little steps to do something for myself. And so I'm going to work out a little bit, or I'm going to get some fresh air or eat something that's healthy. What happens is we're not prioritizing our mind. Mm. And so what can happen is we're, we're doing the workout, we're eating well, we're getting outside, but the negativity is consistent. And yeah. so we're, we're so down on ourselves and all of a sudden we think we're weak. We think we're not inadequate for this space because something doesn't feel right. And so I think step one always is one understanding just the power of our mind and what it can do and understanding that there's so much strength, first of all, that you just have. So it's not a weakness when you, you think you can't stay consistent because your mind is off. All it means is you're focusing on the wrong thing. It means that we're letting the negativity sit and we need to understand how to pause and speak truth into our day and then slowly add in routines so that we can really be um, 
present and proud of ourselves. We're not proud of ourselves when we're negative and we're doing the workout. We're thinking about something that um, it could be subconscious. Like I said, 90% of repetitive, it's just going and going. We don't even know we're having it, but we're doing the workout. So we think we're doing it right. And so going off of that, um, I would say that once we get that power of the mind and we understand what's happening and we understand that we have to speak truth and we have to write it down. My first thing I always do with my clients is I say, what is your why? Why are you coming to me in this space? And why are you ready for this journey? Initially, moms can really say, you know, I want to lose the weight. I want to feel good in my body again. And that's incredible. And we can we can lean in and I want to be able to work on that with you. But that's not your why. That's mm -hmm. not going to get you up every day. The days that are hard, the days that you're just not feeling great, your mind's going to say that's not worth it. You're not going to get there. All the negativity starts creeping in. And the next thing we know, we're not consistent. And mm. so leaning into why are we in this space and why do you want to do it? Kind of going back to my story a little bit, that safe space at home and creating that joy. That's so much deeper than anything that I could bring. And so me showing up every day wasn't for me. It was for my home. It was to bring joy into the home. And that's going to get me up every day. Yeah. I was going to say, what's a good example of a why if a mom is struggling like i don't know why i just know i want to be better mm. i want to like, you give your clients examples of like here what about this what what feels true to you like what kind of examples would you give your clients that maybe are struggling even to find a why so i think a really big part of my program and my clients is that connection right is to say i'm human just as much as you i did a lot of hours which is why i'm sitting where i am but that doesn't mean i don't struggle and that doesn't mean that i don't have hard days and I think it's very important to say that because my whole point of my program isn't to say we're not going to have hard days. Of course we are. But it's about reshifting and retraining our mind how we show up the next day. Mm -hmm. And then when we lean in and we celebrate the next day, when it happens again, our mind remembers this small moment of how good that felt when we showed up the next day. And it's a little yeah. easier next time. And then yeah. again and again. So for a why, I really lean into my story. I tell them, this is what I've been through. And I've seen the lowest, most negative space I've ever seen in my home when I wasn't prioritizing myself. Mm -hmm. And I've seen the most joy and the most present I've ever been when I prioritize myself. And so showing that comparison to my clients and really showing them that was my drive. Mm -hmm. And you're right, it might not be the same for everyone. And it's not the same for everyone. And I'm not saying everyone has to come in with me and have want the same why. But I kind of, what I do is I leave the space for them to think of something. But if they say something like, you know, I want to look good, I want to have more energy, I say, why? 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 I keep asking them why until I feel like we're at this moment that I'm like, write that down and we're going to come back to that. And yeah. so I guess that my biggest thing would say, I would say is think of something, but go deeper and deeper and deeper until you can't go deeper anymore. And mm -hmm. I want you to write that down. Amazing. That's so good. And as you're sharing, it's most often for most women, a partnership. I know there are those single mamas out there who are so incredibly strong, but what ways can a person that has given birth is in their postpartum period, call in their partner? Like how can they communicate to their partner to best support them? Because I know that's something that I needed to do. And for me, having the conversations before I gave birth is like, this is what support looks like to me. I'll tell you if it changes, but is there anything specific or things that women can do to make sure that they are communicating in the right way to be able to get the support? Because I'm grateful that my husband, like even without me saying, will like step up and do things, but that's not the case for everybody. So I imagine there's a lot of women out there that's like, my husband wants to be supported, but he doesn't know what to do. So what would you say to women listening to how to communicate to their partner or even to the partner. Like, hey, this is what you got to do for your lady that just gave birth, going through all the changes. Like, how would how would you communicate that? It's so funny you say that because I not only just got a client call where we talked about this, but this is mm -hmm. such a conversation I have with my clients, which is the communication with our partner. And I think not only as a mom are we holding so much in our head, we mm -hmm. just hold, we, there's so many thoughts going on in our head at all times. 
But I think subconsciously we hold a lot of resentment and frustration with our partner that they don't know we're having because mm -hmm. we're not we're not voicing it. And mm -hmm. so what can happen, obviously, is just the snowball effect of all of this resentment in our mind because we wanted that hour, but you didn't give it to us. We wanted you to feed the baby, but you didn't. And we're not voicing it. We're thinking it. Mm -hmm. And so something really powerful that I talk with my clients and that honestly um, it's funny. I actually didn't think it was going to be such a big part of my program, but it is, which is really coming in, in the communication with your partner is having the communication. Now I always say the night before, which is something I do. And I really lean this in with my clients, have a conversation with your partner, what your day looks like. You might not know all the, the whole day. Of course, every day you wake up, the baby could not sleep all night. And so the whole day is off anyway, but there's something about starting the conversation every night. What does your day look like tomorrow? When would you like a time to go here? Do you have an important call that you need help with? All of a sudden, there's this communication and there's this respect that you both have for one another. And instead of you thinking it all in your head and you're frustrated, you're voicing it to your partner and you're creating this space with them for you to both be on the same page. Even if it's as simple as, wow, in the morning, I would love for you to feed the baby because I'd love to take a shower. Yeah. You voiced it and you said it. Instead of waking up frustrated, going through your day feeling heavy because you don't feel like you're supported when all it was was that simple conversation the night before. And so yeah. I think there's so much power in having that conversation. And I think that unfortunately, we have so much subconscious thoughts going on that we know it's the right thing to do. We just, we're so tired. We don't even, we didn't, we just don't do it sometimes. And yeah. there's a lot of power in that. I, Love that. And it is communication is key. And that I feel like that's the foundation of a healthy relationship in general. But we're experiencing so much postpartum that that can just kind of leave our minds for a certain totally. amount of time. So it's so important to be reminded of that. Thank you. I laugh because with Daniel, I almost every single night after giving birth, like after the first two, three weeks, I would take a bath and I'm like, you got the baby for an hour. If he wakes up, if he needs milk, whatever, you can take care of all of it. Don't call me to feed the baby. There's breast mm -hmm. milk in the fridge. So that kind of thing was my place to like have a moment to myself and restore and reset. And I think a little tip that I've been doing with Daniel even lately is sending him Instagram videos where it's like, oh, every time a woman is breastfeeding, her partner should ask if she needs something to drink or something to eat. I'm like, ding, ding, ding. Yes. And so Daniel, because, hey, it's kind of like a softer way to get that in their mind. I'm like, oh, hey, did you see that video I sent you? That's a good idea. Like every time I sit down, please ask if I need something to drink or eat because I'm feeding the babies. I have two babies that are nursing right now. So I incredible. Need to make sure that I'm being fed and nourished at the same time. So that's like the Instagram thing helps me a little bit. I love that so much. And I think also just remembering we're, we're all doing this for the first, even if it's a second time, each time yeah. is new. Yeah. And so really the communication helps so much alleviate this pressure of, you know, I wish you were, I'm annoyed that you, next thing you know, you're having this conversation, like you creating this space saying, I'm going to go take a bath. That's my space. And he respects you and knows it. And you have that. I think that's beautiful. And I think, yeah. It takes work, but it's it's work. beautiful when it when it happens. Yeah. And something that you say is that like it starts slow. And if anybody out there is a type A person like me, slow is not what we want to hear. We want it to be now. We want it to be effective. We want to see results. So if someone is stepping into this postpartum period, like what kind of explain the whole, it starts slow. Like how does it start slow? How does it snowball? What do you work? What do you work with your clients on when it comes to that? I mean, I'm just going to start with saying I'm the same way. And so I, again, had to retrain my brain, my entire postpartum. But when I talk to my clients initially, I always really um, create this big picture for them and show them that we're going slow. And a lot of them laugh at me and they say, what do you mean? I signed up. I'm ready to go. I'm let's go. Like, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful that in a couple, in three or four weeks, almost all of them came back to me and said, I would have stopped this program. If it was faster, you showed me the power of consistency and I would not be mm -hmm. here today if it wasn't for the pace. And so that in itself was power because it showed me not only did this work for me, but something big is happening here in, in the postpartum space. And so what I mean by that is when you're ready to kind of start this journey and you're like, you have that fire in you and you're like, let's go. I want to, I want to, you know, kind of start rebuilding my mind and body. You have the tendency to say, I want to go all in. 
I want it. So I want it now. So I'm going to do a couple hour workout. I'm going to do it for a couple days. I'm going to eat really well. But what happens is the burnout is so real, but it's also not sustainable. It's That's so, <laughs> it's so real. I mean, you know, everyone goes through it and I think our mind's telling us, oh yeah, we could do this. And then a couple days in our mind saying you absolutely cannot do this mm -hmm. and it is not sustainable for you. And so what I do is I say, okay, I know, I know, I know you're ready. I know you're all in. I'm so proud of you. And we're going to do this together, but we're actually going to start slow because we have to retrain our brain that you do have the time during your day to do this. And mm -hmm. consistency is way more powerful than a very hard couple day workout, even if it's a month. Like, let's say you even do last that month, you will feel that burnout and you will feel discouraged. Yeah. And our, our minds are really fragile in the sense of if something doesn't work out, it will immediately revert back to negativity. Mm -hmm. Okay, you shouldn't do it. It's not good. Let's do it another time. You're too busy. You don't have time for this. And so yeah. in my program, even when I start with movement, it's 20 minute workouts three days a week. And again, I had, a, I had a couple of clients that were like, Oh, well, I, and I'm like, trust me, trust the process. Yeah. And the results are incredible. Mm. They are so incredible because the consistency is there. Yep. They stay consistent because I'm not throwing everything at them. We add one routine a week, not eight. I have eight routines yep. total. We do one a week because I want you to really feel that win every week and train your mind that this feels so good and that you can do it and that there is time. So then next week, when we add another routine, your mind saying, you can do this. You just did it last week. Let's keep showing up. And we yeah. build and build and we're saying, we can, we can, and we're doing it together. And next thing you know, it's this beautiful realization that this isn't a challenge. I'm not challenging you through a couple of weeks to work hard and lose a couple pounds. No. We're creating a lifestyle that's sustainable mm -hmm. as a mom to feel joy and be present. And in order to do that, we have to go slow. And so that's a big part of the program and just going into this season. Yeah, I feel so encouraged just listening to you. Like mm -hmm. you can do it. You can do it. Start off slow because I am, again, like the type A personality. It's like, all right, I'm ready. Five days a week, we're working out. We're doing an hour a day. We're eating healthy. And then all of a sudden it's like, all the snacks in the whole wide world, because I'm just like, I can't sustain this. It's not, mm -hmm. not sustainable because I go all in and then I get, like you said, burnt out. So this is so encouraging just mm -hmm. to hear the way that you're speaking. I want to kind of wrap up with pelvic floor in a second, but I want to summarize everything that you've shared in a few solid, like bullet points that if someone's listening, they can write this down and look back at their notes. So I don't feel like I'm going to summarize it correctly. Some things that I'm hearing are like celebrate the small wins. You talked mm -hmm. about writing it down. Can you give me like three or four bullet points that someone can take away today, write a note down and look at it and start doing those things? Number one is the power of the mind. Mm -hmm. Really understanding that we have power in our mind. We have so many thoughts going in and out of our head all day long. And if we're able to pause and speak truth and celebrate small wins, there is a beautiful lifestyle that we can create where there's joy that we never knew that there would be joy. Mm -hmm. And so that would be my first one, which is really just the power of the mind. Going into those small wins, I think that there's things throughout the entire day that you can pause and celebrate, even if it's something to be thankful for. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of times we take them for granted and we don't celebrate it and the negativity creeps in and we forget that that happened. If we're able to pause and celebrate those small moments, I think it can really transform the way that we live our lives and that can catapult into a journey of wanting to be consistent with all these different ways and finding a why leaning into why do you want to lean it? Why do you want to do this journey? Think far beyond looking good. I want you to think of a reason that would not be shaken in those moments of feeling so low. I want you to look around your home. I want you to look in the mirror. I want you to look at your family and think of something so deep that there's a reason why you are the mother or the person in, in their life right now. You are, there's a reason why you're sitting there and you have something in you that's so beautiful. And I want you to be so present that you're able to give all of that joy to your family. And so lean into why you can show up every day to allow you to stay consistent in your home. Oh, so good. Okay.
pause, speak truth, um, celebrate the small wins, and find your why. And I feel like those things need to be written down. Like you, you did that with us when we were at your event recently. It was like write down your small wins. Mm. Write, write it down. down. Why? I feel like there's so much power in writing mm. things down. And it's something that you can look back at. So if your mind in a moment is not allowing you to think of those good things, go back to when you had a moment where you could think of those things and you could write it down and remind yourself that way. Mm. So good. Okay. Let's kind of wrap up this episode with pelvic floor because if you don't know, you're going to learn today. <laughs> pelvic floor. I love it is so important. Mm -hmm. um, what is it called when our abs separate? Like this was your abs. Now they look like this. Yes. So that's DR. There's so many different things. There's um, urinary incontinence that is affected by our pelvic floor, the pressure on our bladder, which you know has us leaking. There is the separation of the abs. There is just feeling weak in general. Our hips can be unaligned. There's so many things that go into our pelvic floor. So I would love to dive in. And I think one of the biggest things for mothers is feeling empowered and understanding what's going in in our bodies. This is yeah. muscles that we can't see. So we're not aware of the tear and the wear of birthing through our pelvic floor and putting the pressure on our pelvic floor when we're pregnant. So mm -hmm. I would love to dive in. Okay. I don't even really know where to start, but I want to maybe start with my experience. And I don't, I wonder if yours was similar. I'm sure you have so many clients I've had similar experiences. Each time I was pregnant, even though with my son, I carried very small. I think it's hard to carry small with twins. So definitely was not small at the end with the girls. But I had if my physical therapist with my separation, DR. My separation was a two, three, three, two with the girls. And it was like a two, two, three, one with Asher. So it was like not as much with Asher with the girls. It's like, woo, we just taking up all the space in your abs. And, um, I'm still working on healing that. And I'm nine months out because I kind of, I got busy. I was filming a reality show and I just didn't, <laughs> didn't do any of my workouts, uh, my physical therapy, but those moves are so small. So gosh. Okay. Where do you want to start on this conversation? Yeah. I mean, I think what we could start is just feeling empowered with what it is, right? Mm -hmm. I think since we can't see it, what are we even talking about? And yeah. so our pelvic floor is made up of 14 muscles. I love saying that because it's not one muscle. We're dealing yeah. with 14. And so that's, there's a lot going on there. And there's a lot of traction that we're working with, which is great. But also if you're not aware of it, um, that's 14 muscles that we're not aware of after we just birthed our baby. Mm -hmm. And so there's four main points that I always talk about. And there's four points of our pelvic floor. It's where you stop urine, stop mm -hmm. gas. And then the two sits bones are these two bones that we're sitting on that you can mm -hmm. kind of feel. And so those are the four main points of our pelvic floor. And it's really important to understand that out of those four points, we can activate all four. And what that does is we are, we can lengthen our pelvic floor. Lengthening our pelvic floor is through breathing in. We relax our body, but through activating our pelvic floor, we're reaching the 14 muscles that we need to heal in order to strengthen our deep core and to get our hips back aligned and to feel just strong again, because after you have a baby, of course, we, it is the most beautiful experience of your life, but you just gave, you gave birth to a baby in some cases, two babies. Okay. Crazy. And so there's, that there's, was um, two babies. That was a yes. lot on my pelvic floor. <laughs> that is a lot on your pelvic floor. And I think when you're pregnant, it's all about kind of maintaining, there's not a lot of rebuilding we can do when we're pregnant. We're just kind of, you know, we're preparing. And then when you do have a baby, I would say the number one thing for your pelvic floor is breath work. And mm. it sounds simple. It sounds like there has to be more because there's 14 muscles and there's a lot going on. Yes, we want to take the breath work and add it into movement. That's the plan. But mm -hmm. to initially start, we want to feel empowered with understanding what it means to do a full 360 breath and mm. then activate our pelvic floor. So we could do an example if you want, or we could I just love we that. that part out. <laughs> As you were kind of talking about it, I don't know if you heard me. I was like, I was like breathing. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, not. And it, yeah. thinking about it. I would love to do an example and you can kind of describe it. So anybody listening can think about those muscles and doing the breath work with it. And then we can kind of wrap up after that. We'll leave them on a cliffhanger. They'll have to get some coaching with you to find out more details, but let's do the breath work and get that, like describe everything. So anyone listening can have the visualization as they're trying to do it at home. 
And I always have to preface this with, I did months of training in this field. And so when I go over it one time, it can feel a little overwhelming that there's a lot of points that we're focusing on, but you have to remember, this is the starting point. You have all of the information now, and now you could take your time to really feel empowered and do it on your own. So I want to say that because it's a lot of, it's a little thinking. It starts with breath work, but then we activate it. So right. in for the 360 breathing, I like for you have to have neutral alignment. And that means really just your shoulders, your hips, and your ribs are all stacked. And you're not leaning to one way. You really want to feel that engagement of being neutral. You take your hands, your fingers in front, and I want you to put them on your ribs. And so you put them on your rib cage. And what you're going to do, we're going to start with just 360 breathing. I want you to keep your shoulders down. We tend to go up keep our shoulders down. And when we take a deep breath in, we're actually expanding. We also tend sometimes to suck in. So I want our shoulders down and I want us to expand. And you're going to take a deep breath in through your nose. You're going to feel all of your fingers right now as you're taking a deep breath, expand with the breath. And when you feel like you've got enough breath, I want you to do one more. I want you to really take in the deepest breath you felt today. After you had your full deep breath, what you're going to do is breathe out through pursed lips. And what I mean by that is like you're blowing out candles. Like I want you to really press out all of the air. And as you're pressing out the air, you're going to pretend like you're pushing your belly button into your spine. You almost want to act like those two are going to be touching. That's how much air I'm going to press out of my body right now. And so that in itself is 360 breathing. It's something that you can practice on your own. It's important to bring that into movement, but again, that's another step. And it's something where you're focusing on the neutral alignment, your shoulders, deep breath in, and then out through your mouth. So that's 360 breathing. Let's now add a little pelvic floor activation to the breath. When you breathe in, when your body's relaxed, you're lengthening your pelvic floor. So that's doing it on its own. You're lengthening your pelvic floor with a deep breath in. But something happens when we breathe out, and that's when we have to work and do a little thinking. When we breathe out, I want you to think of those four points that I just talked about, stopping urine, stopping gas, and the two sits bones. For the urine and the gas, I want you to think like you're, you can't go to the bathroom, so you have to hold it in, and you can't go right there. So you're, you're pulling that up. Literally, you feel a pull. And then your two sits bones, I want you to pretend like they're coming together. They're, they can't move, but you pretend like they are. And mm -hmm. so what you're doing is you're going to activate all four points at one time. If you could just activate one at first, of course, that's fine. That's better than nothing. And that's when we're breathing out. So you're almost connecting that deep breath out as we're blowing, like with pursed lips. We're connecting that breath with pulling up. So when we breathe in, we're relaxing our pelvic floor. We're keeping our shoulders down. We're getting in a full breath. When we breathe out, I want you to pretend like you're sitting on a tissue and pulling up the whole tissue that you're sitting on with all four points. Now, the most important part of pelvic floor activation is actually that next step, which is lengthening again. Urinary incontinence, a lot of issues that moms will have is that they're engaging their pelvic floor so much and putting pressure on the bladder, which is making there be leakage and different issues. But what's important is just as much as engaging is important, just as much as lengthening is. So just, you don't, I don't, I don't want you to think, oh, I'm engaging in, so I'm just gonna hold it because that's so good for me. You lengthening it. <laughs> like that's what we're gonna think like, we gotta just do the key. No, <laughs> I had to say it because it's so important to lengthen just as much as engaging it. Okay, good to know. All right, thank you. I feel like that's such a good practice. Well, it's gonna be so funny because I imagine women like driving their kids to like, school in the car practicing the breathing or like yes I don't know sitting on a park bench doing you like, never know who's doing pelvic floor activation out there you'll never know you'll never know okay so good we have a few things that I want to quickly wrap up with as we're ending so where can people find you and your program and then you and I have a little like teaser to throw out there as we wrap up but where can people find you and your program Yes. So there's two locations. It could either be on my website, which is for the moms dot online. And so it will all be in the website, which is exciting. And then, or on social media, I'm big on social media. I find all, all my clients come to me from so, on Instagram. And so it's really a space for me to kind of be present for the moms on Instagram. And so that's at by fit by fit by Katie Dickens. 
Beautiful. And we'll make sure we have that in the show notes as well. And if you're listening from when this episode releases up until the next month, Katie and I are, well, I am joining Katie for at her four moms event, and I will be teaching a little mini self-defense workshop. So if you're in the LA area, we would love to have you join. I am so so excited with us today. Thank you so much for having me and creating this space that we can start to fill the gap and make moms just realize that they're not alone in this journey and that there are tips and tools out there to slowly start feeling like themselves. But not only that, but having joy in their life again. Amen. Okay. We need that. We receive it. Thank you so much. Have an amazing day. And everybody listening, have an amazing day too. We'll see you guys later. Thank you. Bye. Yay Networks.